This is the Bigger Pockets Podcast Show 691. I developed initially an app just for myself and friends to apply and quickly had landlords coming back to me, some of which were Bigger Pockets members as well along the way, saying, wait, our side's just as bad, if not worse. You're seeing the trickle down effect of me, an independent investor who's put my life savings into acquiring a property or two to put a kid through college or retire early, and I'm doing it all in spreadsheets. And so if you can make it easier for me, I can make it easier for you too. And so that began the journey of saying, okay, how do we make something that makes it really easy for an independent landlord, independent investor, and then also creates a great experience for their tenant at the same time. What's going on, everyone? This is David Green, your host of the Bigger Pockets Real Estate Podcast, the best, the biggest, the baddest real estate podcast in the world here today with my super talented co-host, Rob Abasolo. Rob, how you doing today? Hello, hello. It's Wednesday and I'm feeling good, man. My back, you know, I had a, I, I suffered, I survived a minor back injury and uh, I feel, I feel like I'm at the, I'm at the end of it. I can finally twist. I'm not ready for a golf lesson quite yet. I've been saving that for a little bit, but I'm close. I'm close to being able to go to top golf again. Which is how everybody golfs these days. No one actually goes to a golf course unless they're over 50 years old. No, I actually bought 10 golf lessons. I like I bought them. I went to the first one and then I threw out my back. So hmm. they've just been collecting dust and that's how they make the money on you. They want you to bank it and just forget about it. And that's that's kind of me at this moment. I think about that with gift cards all the time. Like it's the worst thing ever that you go spend money on a gift card and then you give it to someone. The odd, The number of gift cards I've actually used is very low compared to the number I've been given. You lose them. You don't think about it. I've had one for In-N-Out Burger in my wallet for like four years and I still pay with my credit card every <laughs> single time because I just forget. Well, there's a little bit of a psychology there because someone at BPCon, actually two people at BPCon gave me Chipotle mm. gift cards and I never want to use them because I'm always like, oh, I don't know. Is today the day? Like, do I want to use my gift card? Because you just feel like you're, it's like credit card points. I've got a lot of yeah. credit card points. And I'm just too scared them. to use. Yeah. <laughs> and, and who knows why we are. I do that same thing with credit card points. I'm like, you never know. I might run into a situation where I have no cash and I'm just going to need it. So they build, they build, they build. Speaking of building, today's guest is amazing. Ryan Barone built Rent Ready property management software that makes your job as a landlord much easier and frankly makes managing real estate more fun. If you thought that that wasn't possible, you could be wrong. And Rob and I interview Ryan getting into how he solved these problems, what the software does, how it makes landlording better. And what's even cooler is it doesn't just help landlords, but this software actually helps tenants as well. It makes it easier to be a tenant of a rental property, which only helps your real estate business. And even more, if you wait for the very end of the show, we are going to give you a discount code that you can get access to this thing through a pro membership, which makes it free for you. Pretty cool stuff. Before we get into the show with Ryan, today's quick tip is there's one thing that you shouldn't be afraid to use, and that's the bigger pockets tools we have available for you. Be part of the community, manage your properties, start scale, and manage your entire portfolio with what Bigger Pockets has. You got to check it out. We're more than just a podcast. Go to biggerpockets.com, hover over the little tools bar, and you're going to see there's tons of stuff that will help you build your business. Not to include the forums we have where you can read questions that other people have asked and answers that they got. You get a chance to ask your own questions. A very extensive blog. Man, I used to sit there and work in graveyard shifts and do nothing but read the blog all night long until there's something I actually had to do. I love that thing. So if you're a fellow reader, check it out. Rob, anything you'd like to add before we bring in Ryan? No, I'm, I'm genuinely pretty stoked about this one because Ryan had a really cool origin story for how he even came up with Rent Ready. And so I, I always find that these, these stories are really inspiring because he had a problem. So he's like, I'm going to solve it. And because of that, it became this, this insane platform that, uh, that really helps people. So let's, let's hop in. You got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Ryan Brown, welcome to the Bigger Pockets Podcast. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, David. I am good to hear that. If anyone doesn't know, Ryan here is the CEO and founder of Rent Ready, which is now part of Bigger Pockets suite of tools to help you become a better real estate investor, frankly. So if you're a pro member, you get free access to Rent Ready. And uh, I've looked at it. It's very cool, I will say. One of the things that I look at when I'm looking at sophomore, and I may be like everyone else, but I don't think I am, is how easy is it to use? Like, is it intuitively? I look at it and I know what to do. If that software makes me work, I hate that. Now, some people, nerds, love that. 
they're like, oh, it's like a Rubik's cube and I get to figure out how to make this software work. And they get very excited. I'm the opposite. Like if I got to try to figure this thing out, I don't want to put the energy towards it because I don't make money figuring out software. I make money hitting my KPIs. So like, for instance, I got mint for the first time. I'm, I'm working on a new book for bigger pockets. It's going to have a FI component to it. And I'm coming up with a system people use to track where their money's going. And I was so impressed by mint. It's like, this is, it, it works. It just automatically budgets what uh, I'm spending money on. It knows how to classify it. It tells me how much I should be spending and how much I am. It made it easy. And I got to say, Rent Ready gave me the same vibe the first time I looked at it. So well done creating software that is as friendly to use as your face is to look at. Yeah. And, and Ryan, I also heard uh, that BP had somewhat of an early tie to help you get the right feedback for the concept. Is that, is that right? Oh, yeah. Uh, in many ways. And, and all along the way. Um, in the very early days, I was, uh, I was actually trying to build an app for myself and friends to apply to units. And Bigger Pockets played a part in that because I was going to a whole bunch of meetups and trying to talk to landlords about what issues were they having and uh, what, how could that be solved maybe with some software that would make things easier for them or streamline processes they had. And so uh, that played a huge part. In fact, the the very first uh, partnership we ever did uh, with Bigger Pockets years ago, we only had two subscribers. So it's been, for me, a, a long journey of um, feeling like we were trying to help the same person in a lot of ways, um, just from different angles, you know, from from bigger pockets perspective, for me, it was always the place you go to get information about how to manage better or how to acquire that property or whatever that might be. And then uh, from my perspective, it was trying to uh, provide some sort of software to streamline those things you were supposed to be doing yourself manually. Dude, that's awesome. Okay. I love that because you said you, you in the early days... You had two subscribers, and then how many active users are on the on the platform right now? Yeah, so we have tens of thousands of landlords actively managing on Rent Ready today, all fifty Woo-hoo. states, Virgin Islands, Guam, Puerto Rico. So it's it's grown a lot. Well, congratulations. Um, let's let's back up a little bit, okay? So tell us the idea of of how Rent Ready came into fruition. How, how did well? What's the origin story here? So I was actually in college at the time. Um, I had gotten my first internship and I was all excited to, uh, you know, stay in, in, at the time I was in New York city for college at Pace university. So it meant I got to move out of dorms, get my first apartment, which was going to be really exciting for me. And so I went through that application process trying to apply and I ended up not getting that apartment. They needed a letter of employment, W2 bank statements, tax returns. I had two roommates, all of which had Karen tours as well. So we ended up not getting that unit and I left that thinking to myself, could I just make a way to make things easier actually for us on the tenant side um, to apply to units quicker and more easily. And so I developed initially an app just for myself and friends to apply and quickly had landlords coming back to me, some of which were bigger pockets members as well along the way, saying, wait, our side's just as bad, if not worse. You're seeing the trickle down effect of me, an independent investor who's put my life savings into acquiring a property or two to put a kid through college or retire early. And I'm doing it all in spreadsheets. And so if you can make it easier for me, I can make it easier for you too. And so that began the journey of saying, okay, how do we make something that makes it really easy for an independent landlord, independent investor, and then also creates a great experience for their tenant at the same time. Um, And it, it grew over time from what was initially saying, Hey, can we try to solve uh, applications to, uh, being this completely end-to-end platform for anything that you have to do in terms of managing the property. And, and honestly, truly from those individual stories, pretty much everything on the platform today is from at least one person's story of a problem they were trying to solve in some way we were trying to fix that for them. Okay. So you, all right. So if I remember this correctly, you said that you were trying to get an apartment, yeah. you were get, having a tough time qualifying, I guess. So you're mm-hmm. like, I'm going to create a software that solves this for every tenant that's in this problem, you do that. And then landlords on the other side are like, whoa, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I, I want to even know, how did they find out? Was it because you were presenting the software it was. To, to landlords and they're like, hey, Ryan, this is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Um, I was I was trying not to disrupt the landlord side of things at first. So everything was sending over email initially at that point. So I said, great, I'll build an app where you enter all of your information, you take photos of all your documents, and I still send it over email. And so they were getting this basically packet in the same fashion they had asked for it um, through just uh, you know typical pen and paper means. 
and then saying, wait, but the, the system of managing that in email is not ideal. It's just what I have. And so can you give me initially, it was a way to manage all of those in a, in a platform. Um, and from there, it grew to things like pre-qualifications. Initially, it was just applications, but it grew to things like pre-qualifications where someone said, hey, you know, I had a couple come view my unit. I love them. I'd love to rent to them. But as soon as I ran the full tenant screening on them, I realized I couldn't rent to them. So can we get a pre-qualification that lets me figure out uh, how to basically meet with the best five people instead of the first five people that want to view one of my units? And then do you still have the the tenant component of the of the software or did you completely pivot at this time? Oh yeah, so it's still both, still the mobile app for tenants and in fact it's grown uh, in a tremendous amount from just applications to uh, paying your rent through the platform, even submitting video maintenance requests through the platform, seeing all of your lease documents and running your tenant screening. Um, really is trying to help them um, make everything better. Even during COVID, we had some tenants say, hey, can you help me build my credit score because I'm already paying rent through the platform. And so we built in credit boosting so that they basically enable this. If they pay on time. They're building their credit. Landlords are happy because they're getting their money on time. And that's really what you want at the end of the day. Um, so it became you know, a win-win from everybody, even if it was in that case, an idea coming from a tenant side of things. That's amazing, man. So it wasn't really a pivot. It was just an expansion. Um, yeah. So at this time, when you were, when you were concepting and bringing it and developing it and minor pivots and expansion and everything. What was the marketplace even like for landlords at the time? Oh, I mean, at the time it was, I mean, truly just pen and paper spreadsheets. I was, I, for me, I wasn't interacting with anyone that was doing anything other than, you know, uh, e sending everything over email, paying with checks and cash. So, um, it was truly trying to give, uh, you know, something that could streamline a lot of those issues, even, even the paying rent portion of that, of dropping a check off to a specific location or paying cash, um, and having to meet someone somewhere just felt like something we could, we could make easier for, for everyone involved. Yeah. So you were, you were basically solving a bunch of the pain points that a landlord or maybe even a tenant was having on that journey. Obviously there is, there was a software gap here. If, if so many people were excited about what you had to offer, what would you? What did you identify at the time as one of the bigger needs that smaller landlords needed? Yeah, what I ended up realizing was needed was truly an end-to-end -end solution that took a lot of the tasks that were manual and tried to automate those without cutting into the margins of a landlord's business, right? So the options that it seemed like they had that they were presenting to me at least were either I hire a property manager for 10 to 12% and that might cut into my margins or I, don't, I want to manage it myself for whatever reason, or I do it all on spreadsheets. I kept that margin, but now I'm pulling my hair out because I'm doing just absolutely everything myself. So what we were trying to figure out was how do we uh, let you control it all. So it does whatever you want it to do, whatever you would do physically yourself manually, but um, let that basically be a, a software, almost like a person that you tell to do what you want them to do and they go do it exactly how you want it done. That's a, That brings up a big piece of building a business, right? Is like typically I've found it starts on the back of the founder. We're running as hard as we can. At a certain point, we're like, okay, this is as fast as I can run with all this weight on my back, okay? And the weight is like the work, <laughs> the tasks that have to get done. Josh Dorkin had this issue with Bigger Pockets itself when he was working 15-hour days just sitting there writing code or working in the forums. I think there's an urban legend that to get the forum started, he would, he would create a fake profile and write a question that he would then answer with like a different alter ego just to show people like this is how the thing <laughs> should be looking. Um, and then there's this rhythm of, okay, let me give it to someone else to do because we've all heard who, not how, and we've listened to all these podcasts that talk about how you build a company and you got to leverage and you're like, okay. And then you do, and that person sucks. They don't do a good job. I mean, if you hit it out of the park on your first try, hats off to you. That's awesome. I never have. And I don't know many people that did. It's usually, oh, that's not how I did it at all. And that's not a very good effort. And why do you need this much time off? And how come you're never focused? And why is there always a new drama happening in your life every single time you come into work? And so you take it back on and you start running again. But now you're trying to do other things that you started when you gave it to someone else. And you go through maybe like five or six iterations of this. You finally get a good person that can do the work. How did you transition out of I do everything into I've outsourced the majority of the tasks that need to be done 
and I focus on the vision. And then my follow-up question will be, what stuff did you focus on once you got it outsourced? Yeah. So um, everything that, when we started scaling the team, the I think the first thing is trying to get everything out of your head, right? Like when you're doing it yourself or with a partner, or a couple partners, whoever you started, whether it's your, your real estate business or in my case, Ed and myself and it, in Rent Ready, um, it's you have so much knowledge about what you're doing um, yourself may not be the best way, way, but you, but, but it's the way that, you know, um, trying to document that as much as possible so that you can, um, lower what, what I would call like the hit by a bus metric. Like, um, if you disappeared tomorrow or if you were not unable to do that particular part of that job, could your team do it? Um, it's really hard to do. I'll be honest. It's not easy, but, and it's not an overnight thing. I think it is a gradual, uh, starting of documenting that, but, um, at first I, I would say, get rid of or try to bring on people that um, are good at the things you're the worst at, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in the early days for us, um, we brought on uh, a, des a designer. I'd like to say I'm a pretty good designer, but um, I'm not nearly as good as <laughs> some of the designers on our team. We brought on a content writer, brought on a head of growth, um, that, that and um, one engineer and one mobile developer was basically Did you the hire first these people yourself? hiring we did. We did, yes. Yeah. And so how did you find the people that you decided to hire? Uh, for us, it was uh, mostly Angel, angel.co. And the reason I, I liked that at the time was a lot of people that were looking there were looking for a mission um, that they were trying to solve. And so it made it great that we were all able to um, come together and, and honestly feel like we were a team building that same mission together. Um, and, and that honestly has stayed a, a, a really... A part of the company I'm really proud of today. I think everyone that's part of the team, I'm I'm really proud of, and how much they they love what we do, and that we get to build it together. And um, there's a lot of hard work that goes into it, but a lot of fun that that happens along the way. And um, that's something that I think anybody can carry into their own business. Yeah, it's really cool, man. So it sounds like you were staffing up appropriately, and then you were hiring people that were doing the things that you were bad at. And this is something that I'm now I'm starting to hire a lot more people. That that is how I approach it too. I hire people to do what I can't. And then once I, you know, I'm not stressed out about that and I'm not, uh, you know, scrambling as much, then I hire people that are good at what I'm good at. That way I can start managing those people and actually focusing on the vision. But obviously in the early days of any startup, you, I'm sure you were in the trenches a bit. So can you tell us a little bit about what a typical day was like when you were building out the entire platform? Yeah. I mean, in the early days, it was uh, truly building the apps. Um, I was uh, our first developer for the first two and a half, three years. Um, and so uh, it was building out our iOS app and our Android app and our back end, our front end for landlords. Um, my co-founder Ed and myself were answering every chat. So a lot of days looked like um, answering any questions that people had along the way when they were setting up their accounts, fielding any ideas that they had for us that they thought should be built into the platform. Um, and then turning around and, and making those a part of the platform. And so it, that was um, at least the very early days of, of what a, an average day looked like. And who was, who was running support for you whenever you were building it out? Because I'm sure when you're, when you're developing any kind of service or software like this, there will be a lot of people that are always like, you know, pointing out bugs or things that need to be optimized. Who was doing all that for you? I mean, in the very early days, it was, it was my co-founder, Ed, and myself that were answering chats. And then we eventually brought on uh, a chat support uh, teammates to help with that. And now we have a team of uh, about five on chat support that answer any questions that both landlords or tenants have along the way um, will help even if... Uh, you know, you're getting set up and your tenant has a question, we'll help them with any questions they'll have as well. Yeah, well, what, I'm sure it felt pretty, pretty gratifying or uh, pretty relieving when you hired your first chat specialist or like support specialist and took yourself out of that role, huh? Yeah, I mean, it was it was exciting. Um, honestly, one thing that uh, I've learned even from one of the, the people that we've brought onto our team is kind of this strategy. They describe it really nicely of I do, you watch you do, I watch, then you do. And I think that really was what we naturally did with the chat support side of things. Ed and I were doing chat support. We brought on a chat support person and for a while, um, we were still answering chat with them every day. It was just that we had more capacity because there were more of us to answer. And so there was an opportunity for them to see how we would answer certain questions, us to, to talk about what the best way was to help people along the way. Um, and then eventually now, 
you know, I feel like I learn things from, from them the way they answer things. Yeah, that's right. The student has become the teacher and the teacher has become the student, right? I'm curious, when it came to the feedback you got from landlords, when they were saying, hey, I need this to, to do this better, or I need software that will do this, what were some of the most frequently requested issues or the biggest problems that you had to solve to get landlords to be more successful so they would use the software? Yeah, I think some of the most surprising were in the little details. Um, things like rent collection in general, right? We added collecting rent to the platform, but then we had a landlord that was in Texas at the time and called us up and said, hey, if I uh, have a tenant that pays uh, even a dollar and I'm going through an eviction proceeding with them, it could reset the eviction clock for me. So I need the ability to prevent partial payments. So they either pay me in full or they don't pay me. Um, on a unit or a, a tenant by tenant basis. And so that was um, a case of us saying, oh, wow, okay, there's there's more to this than just collecting rent. And um, then others that came to us and say, hey, hey, I own properties in different states. And in different states, there's different late fee rules about what maximum late fee you can charge. And sometimes it's a percentage or sometimes it's a dollar amount. So I need the ability to, on one of my properties, say, uh, it's a 5% cap. And on another one, I need to be able to say $10 a day up to $50. Um, and, and honestly, a lot of those little details that people brought to us along the way have, I think, made the biggest difference because it enables other landlords coming onto the platform to learn from things that they maybe haven't heard about yet or haven't read about yet, but other landlords have. And if we can continually incorporate everyone's, you, you get that, that that the wisdom of the crowd working together on what's the best way to do this. So in your opinion, as far as your software, what do you think Rent Ready does? Like, what is it the best at compared to your competition? I would say it's actually not in the software itself. I would say it's probably listening to the people that are using it. Um, I think everybody on the team really prides themselves on continually taking uh, ideas and feedback uh, that we're getting from landlords and tenants both and incorporating that into the platform so that what we're building isn't um, coming from me or coming from Ed or coming from anybody else on the team. Um, it's really coming from the people that we're trying to help. And if we if they tell us what to build and frankly, what not to build at different times, we can make something that's better for them. We'll spend our time more efficiently. We'll build the things that they need. Um, and that's really where I, I think the, the biggest focus is. And I think that applies to anything, whether you're building a real estate portfolio or, or a rental platform or anything you're doing, like the people you're trying to help have the answer of the, the right way to do it. So that's something I find fascinating about what you've done. Because if you look at I get people ask the wrong questions a lot of the time. So as an investor, people will say, what house should I buy? What strategy is the best one? Where should I buy it? Right. As opposed to how do I solve a problem? What is the problem I'm trying to solve? If the problem is people want to travel somewhere and they don't want to stay at a hotel, the solution becomes, or the questions you'd ask is what type of property do I want to buy, own, uh, upgrade, whatever, so that someone wants to stay there and would pay more money to stay there. If the problem is, how do I keep a tenant happy so they don't ask for discounts? You ask questions like, what can we do to screen tenants better? Or how can we avoid things that would cause mistakes to happen later? The people that I find don't do well with real estate investing are irritated by the fact they have to solve problems in the first place. Their expectation was I buy a house, money rolls in, I shouldn't have to do anything. And when things go wrong, they take it as a sign from God. I think that's funny that so many people, as soon as something goes wrong, they say, that's a sign from God that I'm not supposed to be doing this because there was a problem, which to me is kind of like saying, I went to the gym, I put the weight on the bar, I tried to lift it, and it was so heavy, that's a sign from God I shouldn't be working out. <laughs> like This is a bad idea. But what you're describing are that the obstacles that you encountered were literally what helped Rent Ready ascend past a lot of his competition is the way that you answered them. Like, What uh, advice or perspective can you offer on the mindset that the obstacle is the way? That if you approach problems that happen with enthusiasm and joy in solving, you will become wealthy versus if you just look at these things with resentment and irritation, you're going to fail. Well, I, I think the the happiness part of what you're saying there is huge, right? You have to love what you do first and first and foremost. But 
um, turning an op, you can turn issues into opportunities. And I think that's the biggest thing that in a perfect world, nothing would ever go wrong. But in reality, things will always go wrong. And at some point, something will go wrong. But you can turn that into something that actually is a good thing. Um, whether it's someone that is reaching out to a, a us on a rental platform saying, hey, here's a problem I have. Here's why I, I it is an issue for me. We turn around and we figure out a good way to apply that, not just to them, but for anybody that would have that issue in the future. And we add that they walk away from that going, wow, you just solved my problem. And I think the same thing that applies for a tenant, right? If they call you up saying, hey, I have a leaking sink in my apartment, you could look at that as, okay, hey, something's going wrong, there's an issue. But at the same time, if you have a good way to manage that in terms of being able to have a quick response time with them and them being able to to understand that there's effort that goes into your side of actually getting that done and they see um, the updates along the way, it, it feels like things are moving faster um, because they just have a little more insight into that. And then when things are fixed, they walk away from it going, wow, like if something ever goes wrong, I have someone there for me. I'm not on my own. And I think that same thing applies, whether it's us or it's a landlord working with their tenants. Um, I think you can turn all of those into a, a time where people feel like you're there for them if something ever does go wrong. And if it doesn't, then great. <laughs> no, no worries. Yeah, yeah, totally. So growing this company, I'm sure you've honestly probably faced a lot of the similarity that newer landlords go through, like a lot of the struggles and really just trying to figure stuff out. And obviously there's always going to be a steep learning curve when you're getting into something new. I'm sure there's a steep learning curve for developing an awesome software, the way there's a steep learning curve for becoming a new landlord. So is there anything that Rent Ready does specifically to help lessen that that difficult learning curve of becoming a real estate, uh, like a landlord or a real estate investor? Yeah, we we try to intentionally implement things that you may not think about if you're doing everything manually yourself. So one of those, for example, is automatically depositing funds to different bank accounts. Uh, a lot of landlords will create a, a different LLC for each bank account, and they're trying to separate the funds for that. If you're doing it on pen and paper and spreadsheets, you just you might not consider that. Um, and when you're coming onto the platform and that becomes a question, we ask you, do you want it to go to a different account because this is a different property? It, it innately triggers that question for you or even depositing, for example, security deposits to a different bank account than rent, which is sometimes required in certain states. Um, so we, we try to build those learnings into the platform that may be um, along the way when you've you've gotten scrapes and bruises and uh, you, you've gone through kind of the ringer of managing so many properties that you have these these things that you know. But uh, honestly, a little bit back to the documentation point of earlier, can we try to pull that knowledge out of all of these the, these experiences that landlords have had on our platform or even before our platform and try to say, this is just part of your onboarding experience that we, we ask you the questions about um, sending funds to different places or setting up auto pay and having insight into that, or even letting you know if a tenant doesn't have renter's insurance when your lease says that they should. Now, I understand one of the things that Rent Ready does well is it will actually create a profit and loss statement for each property. Can you talk to us a little bit about, about that feature? In the early days, uh, we were exporting to spreadsheets because we knew that's what people were already using and they loved. And then we next integrated QuickBooks to allow them to uh, export the information that was coming into Rent Ready into QuickBooks. But what we found was it still took a, a decent amount of setup to actually get that PL by property. So we eventually today integrated with uh, REI Hub, which is accounting built for landlords and out of the box gives you uh, the PL by property and the Schedule E at the end of the year, any tax forms that you may need. And so the intention there is can we make it easier and easier to get all of the information you need on your properties just by using the platform that you're collecting rent through. So I have a question here, just even on the p &L, is there still a bookkeeping component here that's necessary to run your rental business? Or is that effectively the function that you're using to get to your p &L? Yeah. So you don't have to. Um, certainly, if you want to just collect rent through the platform, we have a lot of people that do that. And you, you certainly can. But we provide the option to uh, streamline that further if you'd like to. 
And and even frankly, if you have even a, an accountant that you want to have access to that information, you can invite them for free and they can just log into the platform, only see the properties and, and rent that you want them to see and they'd be able to do anything they need there. Um, but it's a, it's a lot easier for them. We've even had some accountants tell us, I would pay for my clients to use this because it makes the accounting side that much easier for me at the end of the year. This is one of those things where when I was first getting started, even in just short-term rentals, I didn't have any of this. Like I was basically tracking everything on a little dinky like Google spreadsheet and I wasn't automating anything. And so just the use of automation very simple things like how to direct where your money is getting deposited to and then like P&Ls and being able to track everything like that. Had I had that when I started, I probably would have saved a lot of money in, in valuable mistakes that I made over time. So it's really cool that you're figuring out not just how to make it a good experience for the landlords, but I know that you're. it's very important to have a really good experience for the tenants too. I mean, I think the fact that it's a two-sided um, software and focusing on both of those components really is going to just make it that much better in the end. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're if you're an independent landlord that has three or four tenants and and two of those have uh, you know issues, that matters a lot. A lot of your you know each individual tenant has a lot of importance to you. So making sure that you can have a good experience for them without a lot of effort from you is really important because you ultimately have lower turnover in those units. It's less headache for you. It, it should make everything easier for you, for you even. As every property manager knows, decreasing the amount of time, attention, back and forth you have to have with the tenant is what is what lowers the friction in the entire experience of being a landlord. Like if you can get ahead of problems, if you can give them a way that is easy for them to use, like everybody wants to tell someone, just go here and do it, right? But when you send someone say, hey, go call this number for your answer and they get put on a phone tree and a robotic voice asks a bunch of questions and keeps saying they can't hear you and then you end up with a virtual assistant in another country and you're just screaming, it, that wrath is coming back your way at a certain point, right? So it needs to be smooth if it's gonna be automated. I, I personally think automation is a, we talk about it in theory and it sounds amazing, but in practice, it is so difficult to do. If you just listen to the the people, in this case, the tenant, what they say is, I just want to talk to a human, right? I've got emotional pain. The sink is clogged. The, the, uh, the air conditioner won't work. Like I need someone to fix this. I don't want to have to go through all these hoops. So making it easy for them is incredibly important because if it's not, it's coming back to you. You know, as we wrap this up, Ryan, I want to ask you, what was your relationship like with Bigger Pockets and how did they play a role in the way that Rent Ready was developed as well as where it stands today? Yeah. So in the early days when we reached out to Bigger Pockets for the first time, we had two subscribers on the platform. So we were very, very small. Um, we've grown to tens of thousands today, but a lot of that came from the feedback of landlords in the forums or landlords that. Uh, talk to us that we're using the platform. And so uh, that really has shaped. We wouldn't be in the same place today if it weren't for all of the landlords we worked with and, and frankly, all of the, the people at Bigger Pockets we worked with. And the really exciting thing today is now that it, it really feels like we're joining forces in a big way where basically every pro member now just has it included. When they go to biggerpockets.com, they don't even have to come to Rent Ready anymore. They can go to biggerpockets.com and just click manage my rentals and that they're jumping in to actually manage their rentals through rent ready. And it feels to me like combining that initial side of things in the early days of feeling like, okay, we're both trying to help the same person. You're trying to provide all of the knowledge of what's the right way to do th things. And we're trying to provide in the right places, the automation and in other ways, just guidance of, of how to manage everything. But now today, you know, they, they really join forces and you can, you can just access it by basically being a bigger pockets pro member. Well, I am excited to see this bad boy in action. So I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like. Uh, before we jump into that, Rob, did you have any last questions or words? No, man, I'm excited to see the tool. Let's dive in. That was really cool to hear and understand how Rent Ready got started, but even more exciting, Ryan, I can't wait to show everyone how it actually works. So you guys, my name is Ashley Kerr, and I have the honor of working alongside Ryan today to show you guys how Rent Ready works. So Ryan, let's start out at the Bigger Pockets page. How do we even get into Rent Ready? Yeah. So the greatest thing is if you're a pro member, uh, you can just go to biggerpockets.com. 
Um, and it'll bring you right to the, the pro welcome page here where one of the options is to manage my rental properties. The top left option there is uh, to jump in and manage those. Um, from that point, it actually takes you right into Rent Ready. It lets you get started. It links together Bigger Pockets and Rent Ready, those two accounts. And so if you already have accounts, uh, an account with Rent Ready, you'll be able to uh, just use that as your login anytime. But if you're starting new, uh, you can actually come into here and uh, you'll be able to start getting set up and adding in all of your properties. Ryan, the first thing I love about Rent Ready is you have this dashboard that you can customize. So do you want to start telling us a little bit about that first as to what are some of the things as an investor that you want to see right away that you guys can show on your dashboard? So the dashboard is really intended to be your place to understand anything you might need to do at any time, whether it's uh, you know any tasks that you have pending or, or, or completed any pre-qualifications, which are really tenants reaching out saying, I'm interested in your unit, but us trying to help you meet with the best five tenants rather than necessarily the first five that reach out. Um, any applications and screenings, and we automate that screening process for you to make that easy, or any maintenance or rent that's coming up. So it's really your, your hub, your place for you to see if there's anything um, that you might have to do at any given time. Before we even get more into the software and all of the amazing benefits that it does have to, you know, being an investor and using this, this basically just looking at the dashboard now, you can tell this is already eliminating other software or platform that you need to have. So you have your calendar on there. You have a task list on there. You have your maintenance requests. Instead of going out there and getting all these different kind of apps that do you have rent ready that does all of this for you. So do you think you could take us through actually getting a tenant and what it looks like putting the tenant in place? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the top right here of the dashboard is for properties. Um, so that's really where I would start. This is your place to see anything that's occupied, even something expiring in the next 90 days, which I think is a perfect case for um, your point of, do I need to go get a tenant, right? Or anything that's vacant. So I could come in here and see that, hey, one bigger pockets drive, uh, the lease is ending in the next 90 days. I could reach out to this tenant and find out if they're going to renew. But if they're not, one of the really nice things is I can jump right into this unit and to your point about platforms, we'll actually syndicate out to Zillow, Trulia, Hotpads, Doorsteps, Realtor.com. We'll even give you a rent-ready site that you can go throw up on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or anywhere else you'd like. Um, but the idea is to make it easy for you to put together this listing of whatever you would like, any photos you want along the way, um, the rent and anything like that, and basically be able to uh, start getting applications or pre-qualifications in from a tenant. And this is going out to multiple websites, as you mentioned. So it's saving yes. you from having to manually go and put each listing onto each website, which can be a huge time saver. And I think that's going to be a common theme for using Rent Ready is just saving time and maximizing your efforts and being just more efficient and effective in what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And you can always come back in and see, um, we have these indicators here, they'll light up in green if you have something listed. So you have a nice overview of, okay, what's listed, what's not, um, even what units are, do I have more uh, advanced like maintenance coordination features on or do I not? Um, but really the next step in that getting a tenant process would be the pre-qualification. So back on the dashboard, that that top right box there is any pre-qualification that someone submitted. So I have one here from DJ um, who would like to come to the unit, says he has a pet, he has a corgi. Um, a great point on this one is if I don't accept pets in my unit, then I might not be able to rent to DJ even if I love DJ. And vice versa, maybe pets are fine. He's in a good credit and income range is what he reports. And so probably a great fit for my unit. So uh, I can... I can accept DJ here if I think DJ is a great uh, fit for this unit. And I can even customize this template here um, so that every time I come in and I'm accepting a tenant or rejecting a tenant, it says what I want it to say. Um, but this will let them continue on to the next step of actually coming and viewing my unit, booking it on that calendar that you were mentioning, and then uh, actually applying to the property with a full credit criminal and eviction check. And with this template, this template is provided by Rent Ready, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So right out of the box, when you're coming in, 
Um, you have to enter the properties that you want and obviously the information about them and where you want it to list to. But the template, like you're saying, of what goes into the pre-qualification and application uh, is something we've already pre-built for you. And I say we, but to be honest, has been a lot of bigger pockets landlords that have built it for you and a lot of other landlords that have been on the platform before saying, you know, what are the, the critical things that I need to ask for in an application to screen somebody and, and make sure I have the right person in a unit. So the idea is that whether you're, uh, you know, a veteran landlord or just getting started, you have at least the starting point um, with minimal effort to be able to get everything up and running and do it um, at least the way that a lot of other landlords are doing it today successfully. Yeah. And it gives you a starting point. Like why recreate the wheel and create all of these emails or documents from scratch when you have a starting point right in front of you and you can always tweak them and change them so that they are customized to you and your property. But having that template is just a huge advantage and can save you so much time. Yeah, absolutely. And and to that point on the time saving, one of the things that we uh, we try to do along the way is, is reuse anything we can, cut out any extra work. And this goes for both, uh, you know, the, the independent landlord managing on the platform and also for the tenant. So anything they're doing in that pre-qualification carries over to the application. So they're not duplicating any of that work. It's automatically done for them. In fact, if they've pl- applied to other units that are also using rent ready in the past, they may already have a lot of your application set up and ready to go, which just makes it that much faster for them to apply. So let's talk about if we actually um, screen a tenant, can we do that right through Rent Ready and what's that process kind of like? Yeah. So uh, by default, when you're coming in and setting up your unit, um, we have it in there that the tenant will do a a credit criminal and uh, eviction check when they're applying to your unit. Um, I can come into one of the applications here just to show that. And so... uh, you can always turn it off. And if, for example, here I have uh, an example where I had it off for this particular tenant when they applied. Um, and you can manually request a screening afterwards if you'd like. But most of the landlords on our platform want that as part of the application that comes across. And so um, as just an example of that, I can switch over to, and, and any landlord can as well, if I come back to the dashboard and go to the demo over here, you can actually see what would it look like when someone gives me an application with a screening and everything included. So when I come into the credit report here, I can see, okay, this is the uh, the rental score provided by TransUnion. Here are the factors that are going into them ranking in that, and even the things that play a part in their trade lines on their credit report. And then if I go down the left side again, I, there's also eviction report and criminal report where I can see anything across the U.S. Um, that has applied to this particular tenant that might be relevant to my decision making process. And then what is the charge? And is it to the tenant or the landlord or can you choose who picks up the tab on this? Yeah, so there's no charge to the landlord at all. We partnered directly with TransUnion on this, and um, we actually get a des- discount for the tenant in the process. And this is an approach that we've tried to take with everything on our platform of trying to take all of this this massive group of independent landlords um, and uh, use that collective bargaining power to go to people um, like TransUnion and others in the space and say, hey, treat us as if we were one massive portfolio. Um, you know, we're able to get discounts in the process because of that. And so a tenant paying for a uh, tenant screening through Rent Ready will only pay $35, whereas they might pay 40 or 45 even going direct to TransUnion for that. Um, so we're getting a discount even for your tenant along the way when they're doing this process. And that's definitely attractive to an attendant when right. paying cheaper for the application fee to you than to somebody else's rental. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we've let's say we have sec- accepted this tenant. What does it look like collecting rent? Because there's probably some people listening that are actually receiving um, checks in the mail, meeting their tenants, a pickup cash. How does the process work through Rent Ready? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a couple different options of how you can get there, whether you want to do it right here from the dashboard with this plus button next to rent, or if you want to go into a particular renter or into a particular property, um, I'll do it right here from the dashboard, but I can say, all right, I want to set up, um, a lease to start collecting some rent for one of my properties. We can do it for one bigger pockets drive. And so I'll continue here. It'll automatically see that I already have, uh, Ed Barone in that unit as a tenant, so I can continue here. And then I can actually select what I want the, the start date to be for this particular lease or anything like that. 
Um, if I want to select, you know, maybe they're moving in over the weekend, even that's totally okay. I can even, um, set it up so that it'll go out to the end of a, uh, you know, 2023 and I can customize uh, anything in here. So we try to have smart defaults along the way. So by default, when you're coming in, we'll default to the first of the month. We'll automatically remind your tenant if they're late on rent and they'll get a push notification to the mobile app that they have for paying rent. And they'll also get an email for that. But you can always come in here and customize this as well. For example, if you have somebody that um, you know always uh, is late, you could add an additional rule to notify them a couple of days before. Or if you know you have a grace period and you don't want to notify them until uh, you know you're almost to the end of that grace period, you can always come in here and change this to be um, you know when rent is due or when it's late or days before it's due or anything like that along the way. Um, but out of the box, you don't have to, um, you know, change any of that if you don't want to. We try to set it up in a way that will make you most successful just by going through this process. And once again, what a huge advantage, especially to a rookie investor just starting out as a landlord, not knowing exactly what to do. This helps give them the default so they can at least see what kind of the norm is or what most people do, and then they can go and tailor it if needed. Right. Absolutely. And so it'll it'll even generate all of the rent for me. And you can see, for example, I chose to have them move in this weekend tomorrow, which isn't quite the end of the month, but it's getting pretty close. Um, typically, if I was doing this on pen and paper and spreadsheet, I'd be doing the pro rating of how much I should be charging them for those couple days. Um, but Rent Ready will do that for you right out of the box. Um, and it'll mark it as pro rated too, just so it's clear to you and to them um, that that is uh, you know, a partial month but it'll generate all of the rent that will be due for this tenant over the course of the next year so that you don't have to think about it. It's automatically set up within the app. And in fact, uh, the tenant coming into the app uh, when they're onboarding, which I can pull up here with the mobile app on the right-hand side, um, they'll have this on nice onboarding to set up a payment method, set up auto pay, um, and they don't have to even necessarily go into the app every month to pay that then. And Ryan, think about how many people are probably leaving that $72 on the table just because they don't want to do the math and figure it out and just be like, oh, it's only a couple of days, but that's $72. Right. It adds up. It really does. <laughs> so uh, so even for the tenant along the way, we also try to uh, provide some some additional benefits to them too. Um, one of them was credit boosting. And this, this actually came from both the landlord side and the tenant side uh, during COVID. Um, tenants were saying, hey, rent is my busy, biggest expense. Can I uh, try to use that to my advantage in some sort, sort of way? And landlords were saying, hey, can you give me a way to try to encourage my tenants to pay rent on time more often? And so that's what we came up with here with the credit boosting. Basically, we report on time payments to the credit bureaus if the tenant opts into it. And so it becomes a big benefit to landlords because they're getting their rent on time more often. And it becomes a benefit to tenants because they're building a better credit score. So then when they go get uh, a car loan or any other kind of loan, they're maybe getting a, a much better rate than they would have otherwise. Yeah, I think that's another advantage to both sides, uh, as you mentioned, the landlord and the tenant having this capability because this is kind of something new that's really hasn't been done a lot in the past where a landlord could report or the payments to a, a credit bureau. Yeah, absolutely. And same thing on the renter's insurance side. If they have renter's insurance, they can certainly upload it. But if they don't have it and they need help with that, um, they can actually uh, they can actually get that renter's insurance directly through us. And if I jump over to a particular unit, say the one I was just adding um, information for, I can do it either if I'm on the unit or if we go back to the dashboard, there's the option for renters in the top middle of the screen here. And I can see who has renters insurance and I can notify them too. So say it's built into your lease that they're supposed to have renters insurance. If they get renters insurance through uh, Rent Ready, we'll actually keep track of that for you. And so you'd come in here and see that either, you know, Ed has insurance on the property that he's living in or he doesn't. And you can notify him to get that if he doesn't have it or, or see that he already has that set up if he already does. And way to make it easy for the tenant. They really have no excuse now not to go get right. that renter's insurance. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. And same thing is true for auto pay. Um, like for this particular unit, I had uh, mocked up you and Ed in, in uh, one bigger pockets drive. And so if you were splitting rent saying, you know, we each pay half of the rent 
um, I'd be able to come in as a landlord and see, okay, um, you know, Ed's paying four hundred dollars of the seven seven hundred and fifty a month, or or you're paying four hundred dollars and he's paying three fifty of that, and so I can see what day of the month is it going to run, how much is it going to run, so I have an idea of when I'm getting my money for anybody that has auto pay set up as well. That's super cool too. Um, so what are some of the ways that a, a tenant can pay? I mean, can they pay by credit card, debit card, um, electronic payments? Yeah, so uh, all three. So when they come into the app, they'll have the option for rent here, and that'll take them into anything that's uh, going to be due. And so they can they can choose anything they'd like to pay, or they can set up auto pay for that. And they'll have the option to either add a bank account, a credit card, um, or even um, they can link a Chime account and pay with cash at over 90,000 locations across the US. So they have that option along the way to um, do whatever they would like. In the chime, can you explain how that works? That's where they're going into like a drugstore that's affiliated with it, paying in cash, and then they're actually sending the funds. Yeah, exactly. So um, the chime account is something that a tenant can get just online, so they don't even have to go anywhere in person. Um, and then they'd be able to go into, like you said, like a Seven Eleven or they have about ninety thousand other locations across the U.S. that um, the Chime app will show you, or your Chime account will let you know when you're getting the account where you can go in your area, and you'd be able to basically walk in with cash and deposit that, and be able to pay right through the RentReady app. So people that are, for example, working jobs where they mostly get paid in cash, it gives them an easy way to still pay their rent without you necessarily having to meet them in a particular place or then be somewhere to give you the money for rent. It just makes it easy for them to pay you no matter where you are or where they are. Yeah. I had a, an investor friend who the first Sunday of every month would drive around and collect a rent from his tenants. Yes. And oh my gosh, that sounded awful to have to spend a, one Sunday a month having to do that. We hear that so often too. It's, you know, it's so, it's so common. Yeah. So this definitely makes it a lot easier. Um, and I'm sure just there's a lot of people that are introverted and don't want you coming to their house to have to collect rent every month. They'd rather just send it electronically. Absolutely. So in our scenario, we have our tenant, they've got our lease in place, they've paid their first month's rent, they've moved in. Now the long awaited, the 2 a.m. phone call that the toilet is overflowing, all the things are breaking, every landlord's worst nightmare. How is the maintenance handled through Rent Ready? Yeah, so uh, there's a few different options. And so we try to make it flexible, even though um, we try to give you uh, s some way of doing it your own way. Um, so the three options are basically to do it yourself. We have some landlords that say, you know, I am the maintenance person as well. And so you get a notification that comes directly from the mobile app. Since tenants have that mobile app on their phone, they can take a video of the issue and submit it in. And so you'd be able to come in and see, I have a leaking faucet. At 2 a.m., that could mean it's destroying your kitchen floor and you need to rush out of bed and go fix it. That could mean there's a little drip. Um, being able to actually see a video of what that is, if you get maybe not the most descriptive uh, message coming across, you could come in here and see, okay, this is a little drip going into the faucet or into the sink itself. It's not going to destroy the unit if I come in the morning or vice versa if it is really important that, hey, I, maybe I need to hop out of bed and run over there. Um, so really the first option is uh, being able to see these yourselves. The second is we let you add teammates for free. So if you have a maintenance person, even on one property versus another, say you have some properties in, in New York and other in Texas, um, and so clearly different people helping in those different scenarios, you can invite them to only see maintenance in only those units and they'll get notified for those. They'll update everything here. It'll show in real time for you and for the tenants. Um, or the third option is you say, hey, I don't have anybody. I don't want to do it myself. I just want it to be fixed when it happens. And so we have the option, um, whether you're on the dashboard here, to come into the maintenance side of things and add maintenance coordination, um, which is a partnership that we have with a, a company called Latchel, which will basically um, source the maintenance person for you. They'll work within budget constraints that you have. They'll come fix it, mark it complete for you and everything. So along the way, um, you'd be able to come in and just see the status updates of basically what's happening on a particular request, request from the point of a tenant submitting it to the point of it being completed. 
So you are saying that you are making it more passive to be a real estate investor of a long-term buy and hold property, which is absolutely. amazing. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's absolutely so not having to take those dreaded calls that mm -hmm. something is wrong or even to have to try and figure out, oh, my gosh, I don't know who I'm going to call for this. I've never had this issue happen before is yeah. having you know, another option for people to sign up for. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this was just another case of those where in the past. Uh, independent landlords in general uh, weren't able to access this service. If they had less than 72 units, um, they weren't able to get access to Latchel. And so we were able to make that same uh, type of move we did with TransUnion and say, hey, um, let's let's get access to all of these independent investors that also want to um, make things more passive for themselves. And so um, it was a, one of those great partnerships where, you know, any landlord now, if they want to coming in can say, hey, it's time and, and they can even turn it on and off. You know, we're coming up on the holidays and some people say, I just don't want that call during Thanksgiving. Um, and they could have it on for that time um, just to make things easier for them and off another time if they feel like they want to handle it at that point as well. That's really interesting. I didn't know that piece of it, but how convenient if you do want to be, you know, a full self-managing landlord, but you know, you're going out of the country for two weeks, you can right. go ahead and turn this on for that to kind of take over while you're on vacation and not have to line somebody up, up to take your calls. Absolutely. Okay. So let's jump to the last piece of this that I want to know about is the communication. I think having good communication between you, the landlord and your tenants can really build a good relationship. So an example of this is with the maintenance that we were just talking about. If there's a maintenance issue and you can't get it solved, keep your tenant updated on what's happening with the issue that maybe you've contacted the vendor, you've set up the showing or set up the repair for this date, or you're waiting for a part that constant communication I think is really beneficial. So what are some ways that you can communicate with your tenant through Rent Ready? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Communication's so, so important. And, and you have the option right here on the dashboard, um, notifications at the top middle here, uh, you can send out a notification and you can choose. Again, they have that mobile app on their phone, um, which a lot of the time they'll see those push notifications before uh, even emails where other people are sending things along, but you have the option to send that either as um, just an email notification to them, as a push notification or both. And you can choose even within there, do I wanna notify just a particular unit do I want to notify uh, everybody at a particular property or do I want to notify all of my tenants? So for example, say garbage day is changing in, in your county and all of your units are in that area. You could, you could update them on that or say that leaking faucet turns out that you have to shut off water in a particular property one morning and you want to uh, notify everyone that, Hey, don't try to take a shower between 10 and 12 because it's there, there isn't going to be any water instead of you having to go door by door and putting up, um, you know, notes for them or things like that. You can send out one of these push notifications and emails to all of your tenants and you can even customize exactly what you want it to say in the header in the body or what you want it to say in the email. You could even link things into the email if you want a link in the email to say anything else that um, you'd like them to have access to. But that will that will let all of your tenants know about anything you need them to at any given point and keep that good line of communication open. And it also kind of avoids having to get on the phone too. Right. Because you yeah. have everything in writing, having those mm -hmm. records and the log of you right. know, all of that communication with the tenant can, you know, if something unfortunate does help happen down the road that you have, you know, all the communication recorded and in one place to kind of see what that communication was. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, Ryan, I just got to say, like going through this and I use it for my boot camp, the uh, real estate landlord boot camp that I do with bigger pockets. And everybody has loved using this, especially as rookie landlords getting started, jumping into this, like all of the tools and features it has to really help you get started as a landlord, because there's so many things you don't even think of that can make your life easier and rent ready really has all of those things. I appreciate you having me on. It's it's been a lot of fun, and and I love hearing uh, about all of your uh, your uh, master classes as well. Thank you, Ryan, for doing the demo. And now I'm going to send it back to you guys. Well, thank you very much. That was very cool to see. 
Um, I feel a lot more confident about if I ever had to be a landlord myself. I'm a proponent of using property managers, but I bet you they would love having a platform yeah, like this to definitely. do their job a little better. Rob, what were your thoughts? Yeah, man. Very cool. Very uh See, very easy to use, it seemed like. So excited to dive into the tool a little bit more. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for your time, man. If people want to learn more about you or more about Rent Ready, where can they find you on the internet? Yeah, so they can find us at, at rentready.com. It's R-E-N-T-R-E-D-I. Uh, dot com. We have to spell it wrong because we're a startup. Um, mm-hmm. Or they or they can uh, honestly now even just go to biggerpockets.com if they're a pro member and uh, log into that pro account and click manage my rental properties. I want to give you some props on being a startup and not putting the letters L-Y at the end of a word associated with the industry, like 99%. <laughs> like you Rent-ly. could have called it Rently. That's exactly right. Like that was probably staring you in the face. You probably workshopped it. You're like, you know what? We're edgy. We're not like everyone else. We're just going to spell it different. Um, there was no way to work an X into it. That's another thing that people will do to seem cool and edgy is if you can- future. Yeah, maybe at some point you'll be able to do that. But thank you for not calling it Rensley or Landlordly or Wealthly or Housely or any other form of Lee. That's how you know. I'm in Silicon. I'm in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Silicon Valley is very close. And so like everything just becomes, oh, you have a problem? Let's let's try to find an app for it and end it with Lee. And that's and it's worked. I don't know why, but it definitely has been happening. So thanks for that. Rob, if people want to find out more about you... Where would they go? You can find me at Rob Lee on uh, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me at Rob Quaffley. Built. <laughs> Quaffley. Oh, find me on that Rob could Built be your on next YouTube. kid's middle name. Rob Quaffley Abisola. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I haven't had my Quaffley this morning, but feeling good, feeling good. Uh, okay, <laughs> Rob Built on YouTube, on Instagram, and then Rob Bilto on TikTok. What about you, Dave Lee? Where, where can you people can, find uh, you? <laughs> Dave Lee. <laughs> you can check out my website. It's davidgreen24.com. It's going to be remade. I should probably have you look at it, Ryan, since you do coding. You could probably make it way better. So what I need is for everyone to look at it and then message me with what you think it should be different or better, and then maybe I'll have one of Ryan's content contacts or maybe Ryan himself make the website better for me. Or you can follow me on social media at David Green 24 or on YouTube at David Green Real Estate. Thank you for asking, Rob. Yeah. Say, hey, did you, l- let me just say something real fast. In this time that you said that, I just went to your website. It's pretty good. You you really made this seem like it was going to be like 1992 GeoCities, but it's actually a pretty nice website. Don't be so hard Thank on you yourself. Thank you for that. It is going to be remade though again. Like I finally got, I have been so frustrated if I can vent for a second with like, I hired a person and he was like a full-time tech person. He was supposed to work for me and about like seven months went by and all I got out of it was a website that we then had to redo. And so this website's been like 12 months in the making to get that and now i'm like oh this isn't going to work we have to redo it again to show the because i have so many things going on right like it's confusing if you're like well i've heard of the one brokerage i've heard of the david green team i've heard of bigger pockets i've heard of his books like it's very difficult to kind of understand like what's the stuff david's doing and now we have these imposters that are floating around pretending to be me and public service announcement they're not just pretending to be me now the people on my team are having fake accounts made so yesterday i got a text message from someone saying hey is ricardo carrillo on your team and i said why yes he is and they said okay good i thought it might be a scam and then it turns out someone was in person Impersonating Ricardo Carrillo, who's one of the main loan officers at the One Brokerage, and trying to scam this person out of money, pretending to be a person that works for me. So, like, the levels of crap that we are getting into now with these scam artists are significant. So, uh, don't ever go to davely.com. That's a scam. That's not me. <laughs> it's going to be David Green 24, not David dot green, not underscore David, not David Grenay, not David. Like, they always change a little tiny. Thing on there so uh yeah i have to make a new website so it's obvious like what what i'm up to well hey uh one final thing before we turn in here david if everyone at home enjoyed this episode if you enjoy us if you like listening to our our weird voices and our weird antics every single week would you do us a huge favor in consider leaving us a five-star review on the Apple uh, podcast website or wherever, wherever you listen to your podcast. It helps us. It helps us rank. It helps us in the podcast algorithm, get fed to new people that are wanting to get into real estate and into financial freedom. So please do us a solid, leave us a five-star review. And, uh, and that's it. That's it. That's, that's my only, that's my last plug. 
Well, thank you for that. Ryan, any last words before we let you get out of here? No, just thank you again for having me and uh, excited to have Rent Ready and Bigger Pockets working together. Great to meet you. And thanks for the partnership that you've done. You've definitely helped make the experience better for our listeners. And hey, if it's better and it makes some more money, I'm all for it. So you rock. Yeah. And that was our interview with Ryan Barone. CEO and founder of Rent Ready. Rob, what'd you think? Oh man, that's awesome. And I'm just, I'm honestly happy for all of the people out there, all the BP Pro members that are going to get this included with their membership if they enroll. Yeah, it's a significant portion of any business that you're running, which real estate is, is like, what CRM are you going to use? So for me, real estate team, one brokerage, my uh, portfolio, the CRM sort of like, it's like the language that you speak. It's very significant. Like a lot of the the way that my bu- I've built the businesses is off of the foundation of the CRM. So when you get that thing in place, which Rent Ready is for landlords, it gives you a lot of clarity on what you need to do. All these questions like, oh, what am I supposed to do? What if I forget something? When you're working off of a CRM, it's asking you the stuff and there's like a little box that needs to be filled out so you know you need to go do it. So this is gonna be a big stress reliever for a lot of people. Now, if you're one of the people who is listening to this and said, I think I'd like to get into this real estate space here. I think I'd like to buy a property, manage it and become a millionaire. Well, we're gonna help you do that. If you go to biggerpockets.com slash new pro and you use the code new pro N-E-W-P-R-O, you can get 20% off your first year of a pro annual membership, which includes rent ready. Rob, what say you to that? Yeah. And you're not just getting rent ready, Dave. You're also getting access to the new rehab estimator tool as well. So when you're in there, you run your, your comps, you can actually do it on our calculator and just make sure that you're dialing in your numbers that much uh. more. How often do you get asked that question? How do you estimate the rehab? <laughs> several days. That's, oh, sorry, that's several days a week. Yes. It's right up there with, should I get an LLC or should I own it in my own name? Like this is one of the trickiest parts is how do I estimate the rehab? Well, now Bigger Pockets Pro members have a calculator and it's very cool. I've looked at it. You literally put in bathroom. This level of finishes include shower, sink, and towel rack. And it's like, like you do. How do you do Super it? Handy. Right? <laughs> There it is. And then boom, here's a number. And you, and it even asks you by area. So you know if you're in Kentucky, it's going to be cheaper than it is out in California. You get a rental estimator tool. So if you're like, I don't know if this property is going to cash flow or not. Well, the calculator does. You get a rent estimator tool. I don't know what it's going to rent for. The calculator knows. Like This was what made real estate investing hard. And it's now been made so easy by technology and software. And so like we say, there really is no excuse. Uh, that the technology is doing all the heavy lifting for you. And if you like off-market deals as a pro member, you're also going to get access to the Invelo app that helps you put together campaigns to contact off-market sellers and find the ones that are most likely to be motivated. So if you're interested in this, use the code NEWPRO that you get because you're listening to the podcast. We love you for that. Also, please consider giving us a rating or review. We really appreciate that. All right, Rob, that's all I got. Anything else for you? Nope, nope, that's all. I'll see everybody, uh, all the new pros on the forums and uh, excited for everybody to automate their life and get get their time back. Let's just that's all we all all really want, Dave. It's to get our time back. That's right. You may have all the watches, but do you have all the time? This is David Green for Voices on a 2, but shirt is on a 10 Abasolo. Signing off. <laughs>